Hello everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin and welcome back to another new LEGO Harry Potter set review. Today we're going to be looking at set number 76396, the Hogwarts Moment Divination Class. This set includes 297 pieces and retails for $29.99 when it released March 1st of 2022. Now this is the second Hogwarts Moment set that LEGO released this year, sixth the one in the lineup. Looking at the box art, you get your main LEGOs up at the top, regular stuff off the side, minifigures at the bottom, folded out look at the bottom in addition to the closed up book from the front with your minifigures interacting. Now, spinning to the back where we can turn it sideways, you can take a look at that unfolded classroom a lot better. We also get a small advertisement for the other books at the top, which is something that you don't see on the box for the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom, which I find rather odd, but they're advertising Moody there, so it doesn't really matter. You also get your push tabs with this being a smaller box. So yeah, that's all that I have to say for the box art design, so let's take a look at the box contents. Looking at the box contents, just like the other Hogwarts moment sets, you get two numbered bags, some loose pieces, as well as your stickers and instruction manual. For our sticker sheet, we have a lot of bigger stickers for this particular set, just to create the main room. And for the instructions, we mimic the front of the box, win guy from the back, piece count for two pages, leading to the same advertisements you're gonna see for all of these sets right there for the Hogwarts lineup, as well as the entire March wave, which I'll be reviewing. And then our final overall model for this particular set. So yeah, that's all that I have to say for the instructions. So let's take a look at our minifigures and the final overall model. Looking at our first minifigure, of course, we have to get Harry Potter, the boy who lived included in this set. We get the mid-sized legs to represent a year three situation in this particular set. Torso piece is a repeat from last year's wave in the summer, where you can see the red and yellow to represent Gryffindor. Get the open look from the front, as opposed to the closed look that you'll see later on for Parvati. We get the little hood printed from the very back, wand for the accessory, facial expression should be the same one that we saw way back in 2019 with a very nice smirk from the front, and you can turn that right around to see a angry look from the back. Now the one thing that really confuses me when it comes to this particular version of Harry Potter is the fact that we get the hair piece that we see in the first collectible minifigure series to represent year three instead of the actual mold that they made way back in 2018 that they ended up using for the year three version of Harry. It's just really odd and annoying in terms of continuity that they couldn't just give us the regular hair piece, but I mean, I guess it's nice for them to include this particular hair piece, which is the one that you would typically see for Cole from Ninjago way back in the day. Next, we have a rather interesting inclusion of Parvati Patil for the second time ever in LEGO form. Her first appearance was way back in the 2020 Avent calendar, where she appeared in her Yule Ball outfit. One thing that I really appreciate when it comes to these two variants of her character is the fact that we have an exclusive facial expression for her in this particular instance because the facial expression we saw on the Yule Ball variant has a little special detail that is exclusive to her look in the Yule Ball, but this one completely removes that little marking on her forehead, so I really love LEGO's attention to detail in this particular wave, even down to the minifigures included in the most recent Clock Tower. I really love that the designers are really thinking outside of the box and just giving us really accurate minifigures. Now compared to Harry, we get the closed robes instead of the open robes here, which we saw last year in 2021. Mid-sized legs to represent a year three representation. My only complaint, again, just like the other Hogwarts moment set that we got, is that we got two Gryffindors and we could have gotten her sister from Ravenclaw, Padma, which would have been a much nicer fit. Back printing should be the same as Harry, so I'm not gonna show it. But you can see the new and exclusive facial expression with a very nice smirk from the front. And you can turn that right around to see a more confused, concerned, unhappy look from the back. And we also use the same hairpiece that we saw for her Yule Ball variant, which I think is okay and gets the job done. And lastly, we have likely the sole reason why you'll end up picking up this set. We have Professor Sybil Trelawney for the third time ever in LEGO form, second time in the new reboot lineup. She is somewhat sporting a brand new outfit, which is covering up the outfit that we got for the first collectible minifigures version. 
when it comes to the hair headband combo that is practically the same exact printing, maybe just a little bit different when it comes to the coloring and some of the sizes there for the lines might be a little bit smaller compared to the 2018 version, though it is practically the same and it is the same exact mold with the dual molding. When I first saw pictures of this minifigure, I honestly didn't like the outfit, but having this in person, I really love how she turned out and I also really like the inclusion of all the shiny bits for the front of her outfit. You can even see some of the attention to detail when it came to the older outfit that is underneath this new one that you see here. I also would have liked to have seen a skirt piece for her minifigure, though then again there are accessories for her to interact with, which makes that unnecessary. Spinning her around, you can take a better look at her back printing, which I'll also remove the hair hat combo again, proving the dual molding there, and revealing the other facial expressions so we can take a better look at that. From the front, where you have a very nice smirk with the glasses, and you can turn that right around to see another confused face, kind of similar to the one that we see for Parvati in this set. And I'll put that hair headband combo right back on. Overall, a really nice figure and great to see her return after quite a long hiatus. Starting off our look at the builds with the classroom layout, again, there's a lot of larger stickers to make out the backdrop of this particular set and a lot of different architecture used just to create like the window frames or at least the door frames that really don't make too much sense. There are a few things that I think are really missing, specifically a fireplace that should probably be where this cabinet is, though I do like that they include a spot to place the book which I'll show momentarily but then again there are a lot of a lot more inaccuracies within this particular build compared to a lot of the other Hogwarts moment sets that we've seen in the past. Now going smallest to largest with the builds included first we have a really exciting accessory of this lime green book that includes an exclusive one by two tile print featuring the Grimm. This is supposed to represent a divination book, just like the other Hogwarts moment sets. You get an exclusive print in there, which I really appreciate that reference in here. I think it's really amazing. One thing that probably would have made this better is if they actually included like a teacup that had the print inside of it, though I don't know if Lego exactly has the technology to do that as of yet. Another thing that I have to applaud them on is when it comes to continuity, we get a lime green book just like we saw within the actual astronomy tower. So that's really nice that they did reference it within this color within two sets already. Next, we have this little crystal ball that you can actually place on the table included. It is made up using one of those fish bowl helmet pieces in that translucent clear color. And you also get this translucent blue head underneath it and it's atop a small jumper plate just to make it easier to fit on top of that table. We also get another smaller table to go alongside Professor Trelawney that also features a jumper plate with this tea kettle. Unfortunately, other than the stickers, we only get two more teacups within this particular set, which I find rather disappointing. I would have liked to have seen more, just so you get the opportunity to give it to more than just two minifigures. Like the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom, we have a rather interesting table build featuring one of these two by four jumper plates, which is in that orangish brown color, which I really like getting. We also get some of these ice cream cone pieces as the legs, which I find is a rather creative use of those. We also get two chairs using the same exact build that we saw within the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom right there. You can place your minifigures of Harry and Parvati just sitting the front of their legs on the studded area. And again, you can just place some of your accessories here if you really want to. Of course, Professor Trelawney has to have a big chair for her minifigure to sit on. We get a small pillow in that nougaty color from the very back, but otherwise it's using this dark red color scheme. It is also all tiled off from the bottom just to make it easier to sit it down. And you also have this little far connection from the very back, which I find rather odd. Though I appreciate it as a kind of handle, it really isn't necessary. And just like your students, you get the two studs from the front so you can sit Professor Trelawney down in her chair. And lastly, for our extra accessories included, we have a sticker on this wall element piece featuring more tea kettles and tea cups. We also get some clip connections, which I don't know why those are included. They don't really help when it comes to storing this away, so it's just kind of confusing why they exist there. I mean, maybe you could put 
the other teacups that we have included in this set right there if you really want to, though I don't see why you would want to do that. Now looking at the build for the classroom layout, again we get a lot of similar building techniques when it comes to building on the side of these larger clip pieces that form the outside of the book. You can see the curtains made up with this darker red in addition to that little bit of tan that you would normally see around Hogwarts, a lot more brown and dark red being used within this particular set, which I actually really like compared to some of the other Hogwarts moment sets. I also really like getting these little window panes down here. And the sticker details in the very back are really accurate and I really love the colors here, the dark red curtains again, and also just showing the spiral staircase that leads up to Professor Trelawney's office and also one of the actual windows there, which we don't really see too much of within the other stickers where you see a, an abundance of these teacups here for reading the tea leaves, which is really interesting to see that they went that direction. We also again get another one of those small portraits, which you'll also happen to see within the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom. That's very likely one of the designers. One other really interesting piece is this opalescent translucent cylinder piece, which I don't know why it's included. I don't know what it's exactly supposed to represent because we do have some other torches, these little lights over here, and also an actual little lamp up there. So it's just kind of confusing why that's included. We also have somewhat of a weird inclusion of this gem over here. We have a small little cabinet that doesn't feature anything in it, though you are meant to put the book that's included within this particular spot. And as we move up, we get for the very first time an unprinted owl in that tan color that I bet will make its way into a number of mocks over the next couple of months. And as we move back down here again, we get those smaller teacups, one for Harry and one for Parvati. And we lead to another exit or entrance, depending on which way you want to actually put it. Now to close up the book on each side, you get two of these hinge plates that you can swing into the book and then you get the clip piece connections from the very back so you can close it all up. I'll show all of the other accessories going in to form this top portion in a minute but first taking a look at the outside we have a purple color which hasn't been used for any of the other Hogwarts moment sets and is kind of a unique color to divination so I do appreciate that. We keep with the continuity of this orangey yellow being used for these curved tile pieces, which you'll also see that color return from the spine of the book, where we have another sticker on one of these two by two tile pieces with a little crystal ball, which you'll also see featured from the very front of the book with a few other little references to say tea leaves and all sorts of stuff like that. I think this is supposed to reference the Grimm, but I I, I just think that's a really funny way to reference it. Hopefully we don't see a dog like that for Sirius. I hope that they actually make a brand new mold and not give us a repeat of something when it comes to the new Shrieking Shack set. And just like the other Hogwarts moment sets, we also have these little bits on the very back that allow you to connect it to the other ones where you can open them up and spread things out and have four classrooms in a circle. Finishing up by packing this book away, we're going to start by just tossing the divination book inside this cabinet area. You can easily just close it up like that, and you can start swinging these side panels that are connected using those hinge plates. It also seems they want you to stack up both the chairs and place them on that one jumper plate stud on one of those one by fours with the two studs separating. You can also put this other little table over there. Now we can start closing it up a little bit, place this stickered element upside down on the studded area over here, then flip Professor Trelawney's chair upside down and also place it on one of those anti-studs, which is using the stamp piece there with the clip piece connection, which I find rather nice. You can also remove a little crystal ball and put that over here on top of the chairs. And lastly, just place the table to seal it up. Now, just like the other set that I reviewed, I have to complain that you don't see a lot of tan or white from the outside as you would typically see for the pages of a book, but that's not something that's really possible for LEGO to fix. And compared to the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom, we don't get as many studs to place your minifigures from the top, which really bothers me. I would have liked to see more studs from the very top. I don't know why they couldn't 
keep that continuity that we saw from the other ones where you saw a lot of studs so you can actually place your minifigures easily standing or sitting on the jumper plates on top of the book. So overall for $30, is this set worth it? I mean, the minifigure selection is nice enough, I would have liked to see some more House Unity, but it's nice to see Professor Trelawney return after quite a long hiatus. Just like Mad-Eye Moody, these two characters I see selling very well within these particular sets, just because we haven't seen them in so long. When it comes to the building techniques for the book, it's a lot of more of the same, and I am really annoyed that they didn't put a fireplace in here, because that is really one of the big features that I think of when I think of the Divination Classroom, and especially from the books. That is the one feature that I am really disappointed that LEGO was not able to include here, but they somehow managed to include it within the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say for this video. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this set. Also remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so every time I upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now and I will see you next time. Bye!